with therapy, uh, you have to get in somebody else's reality. And I think one of the things that happens with, with military, when you have PTSD, part of it is you can't relate to people and mm. people can't relate to you. And I'm always thinking, how would you do that therapeutically? And it's in the details. The experience of flying in the dark in a helmet into a war zone mm. for not quick, because if it was a film, that would be a montage. Yeah, you go yeah. plane, boom, uh, he's on it, do, ba, ba, do, boom, and then down. No, you sat there mm. and thought about it. Well, do you know what's a really good montage for that is Saving Private Ryan, we're on the boats. Right. Um, and just before the boats, before the front comes down, yes. you sort of, they're all there. And it's, I think it's like a minute or two long and they're all Didn't sort some of, vets from there say that was really like a yeah, good representation? Yeah, of, and I say that's as close as I can. Oh, don't get me wrong, I'm not. I'm not um, saying my experience is like you didn't land at Dunkirk. Landing, it's like freaking <laughs> out. Like, but but that was a good representation of like you're sat there in your own thoughts. You yeah, know, you're 20 years old, going, I'm about to fly into Afghan. Like, I'm replacing someone who's who's you know died. You must let's have been. go. <laughs> yeah, and uh, there's there, there's that sense of like let's go and a kind of a shock and dissociation because the experience, it's not like they can grade you up to that. They can grade you up to a yeah, lot of to things. Yeah, to a certain point. Like, they can't grade you up to that experience yeah. of, I'm now going to fly into a war zone in the dark in this massive fucking plane. I don't know if you knew the people you were flying with. Mm, or One lad, I think, Aggers. One lad, he, yeah. It's crazy. Um, but I think, I think as well is like what was, so I've got massive respect for like people who are in my position now mm. who were out there at the time. So I've got three daughters, a wife, mm. you know, like if I die, it's it's uh, probably a bad thing now. Whereas at the time I was like single, like not estranged from my family, but like didn't live with my family, mm. hadn't for a few years. It was like, if I die, it's going to be sad for everyone, but it's, it's not massive like the the practical world. cost if you die now. Uh, yeah. Where there wasn't then. Whereas then it's like, oh, that's a shame. Yeah. Like, oh, do you remember Sam at school? Yeah, he died He died in Africa. I'm like, oh, that's mm. real. Oh, that's sad. Mm. Anyway, should we go and, <laughs> you know, whereas now. <laughs> I'm sure it would be more than that, but, I, maybe, but, I, I, but I, I take your point. I sort of think that was my mindset going mm. in. I, mm. I kind of remember. You felt disposable. Yeah, I felt on the ground. I think that's probably what I needed to feel like. I, is like, I think you do. Yeah. And I think everyone finds that what they need. Mm. So I can't imagine how a sergeant would feel, say he's got, well, I know of a sergeant who had two, uh, th he was in my position, had three children and obviously mm -hmm. he passed away on our tour. Mm -hmm. um, how the flip do you like? So he was your, he was the age you are now. He was pretty much me now. I think right. he was slightly older. How on earth do you have the courage, the mindset, the ability to switch that side of your life off, mm. to go and do your duty that, you know, for a cause that you probably don't massively potentially believe in? Yeah. You know, let's at be honest. Such cost, at such yeah, cost. Yeah, for for you know polit politicians who you know are living in a gated community in mm. in in London. Just so we can secure opium. I'm <laughs> joking. That's listen. Don't be silly. This isn't a conspiracy 